Hello, viewers. Welcome to the online class organized by Figokta. Today's topic is memory. First, let's take meaning of memory. The sum of everything retained by the mind is memory. Memory is the mental faculty of retaining and recalling past experience based on the mental processes of learning, retention, recall, and recognition. Memory is our ability to encode, store, and retain, and subsequently recall information and past experience in a human brain. It is the process in which information is encoded, stored, and retrieved. Now let us take definitions of memory for our better understanding. Number one, a memory is a new experience determined by the disposition let down by previous experiences, the relation between the two being clearly apprehended, says by F.S. Rose. Number two, memory is the characteristic of living organism in virtue of which what they experience leaves behind effects which modify future experience and behavior in virtue of which they have history and that history is regarded in themselves. Zems Dreba. Third, memory consists of uh, Retaining and remembering what has previously been learned, says Woodward and Marquis. Number four, memory is direct use of what has been learned, says Woodward. All the above mentioned definitions of memory lay stress on the resurrection of the past experiences, but memory does not consist only of resurrection or revitalization of the past experience. It consists of something more. In order to have a clear picture of memory, we shall have to understand the various symptoms and actions and marks of good memory. So now, next, let's take signs of good memory. We meet many people who have great memory, and often we envy them. There are several facts for the good memory to attain. So now let us take them one by one. Number one, quick learning. A child with good memory learns something very quickly and learns the lesson on mere one reading. Number two, Organization of learned content. Memory is no bag or box in which that are placed disorderly. We can recall a learned material properly only when it has been stored in the brain in a systematic manner. A man with a good memory stores data in his brain in a systematic manner and is able to recall it when needed. Number third, good retention. A man with a good memory has a good ability to retain, ability of retention also. The memory he learns is retained in his memory for a long time. Fourth, quick recall. A man with a good memory has a quality that he recalls the learned materials rapidly. He presents the retained content without any delay if needed. Number fifth, accurate recognition. A man with a good memory recognizes the previously known things. Number sixth, forgetting unnecessary materials. A man with a good memory only retains necessary facts and forgets 
unnecessary facts. Okay, next, let us take another heading under the topic of memory, that is types of memory. Psychologists have tried to classify the memory into certain types according to its nature and the purpose it serves. They are as follows. Sensory, short-term, and long-term memory. Now, let us discuss these types of memory in detail. First, let us take the first type of memory, that is sensory or immediate memory. Sensory or immediate memory is a memory that helps an individual to recall something immediately after it is perceived. In this type of memory, the retention time is extremely brief, generally from a fraction of a second to several seconds. All sensory impressions disappear as they are erased by new information. For instance, when we enter an auditorium, we see the seat number on a ticket. Having occupied the seat, we forget the seat number. Sensory memory is needed when we want to remember a thing for a short time. Okay, next let us take the second type of uh, memory that is short term memory. Short term memory is also known as working memory. It holds only a few items and lasts only for about 20 seconds. However, items can be moved from short term memory via process like rehearsal. For example, when someone gives you a phone number verbally and you say it to yourself repeatedly until you can write it down, if someone in between interrupts your rehearsal by asking maybe a question, you can easily forget the number since it is only being held in your short-term memory. Okay, next. Let us take the third type of memory, that is long-term memory. Long-term memories are all memories we hold for periods of time longer than a few seconds. Long-term memory encompasses everything from what we learned in first grade to our old address to what we were to work yesterday. Long-term memory has an incredibly vast storage capacity and some memories can last from the time they are created until we die. We will now take the next heading and a topic memory that is measurement of memory. Generally, three methods have been described by psychologists to measure memory. First, number A, that is number A, recall. We use the methods of recall to measure the memory of our students in the examination. It requires a person to reproduce correctly what he has previously learned. Recall is very simple to measure. You saw some list of words to the students. And after exposure of specified time, ask them to recall as many items as possible. The percentage of the recall store is taken as to be correct. Number B, recognition. Recognition is discrimination between seen or unseen. It is what we do when we take a multiple choice test. When we recognize the correct choice out of a number of 
choices. In a typical recognition experiment, the subject's ability to recognize items he has just studied is tested by showing him the study items together with new distractors, that is items, and asking the subject to identify the study items. Roses Saffold conducted a series of experiments on recognition. In one experiment, 540 words on cards were presented to the subject who went through deck of cards at his own speed. Next, he was tested with 60 pairs of words. One word in each test pair had appeared in the deck of cards just examined, while the other words in each pair was distracted. The subject's task was to pick out words in the cards in each instance. On the average, the subject recognized 90% words. Next point, next type of uh, method is number C, that is relearning. The third type of technique of measuring retention is relearning. Instead of asking the subject to recall or recognize materials, that have appeared in his past experiences, we may ask him to relearn the material at some later stage. The difference between the number of trials or opportunities required to learn the, the material initially and the number of trials required to relearn is then considered to be an index of Retention. Index is often referred to as a savings score. Okay, next, let us take another subheadings under the topic memory, that is, improvement of memory by practice. In order to improve the memory of the students, the teacher should take the following steps. Number one. The teacher should try to use the improved methods of teaching and help the students properly and nicely. Number two, the questions that a teacher puts to the students should be clear. Number three, the teacher should encourage the students to pay proper attention before they learn a particular lesson. If proper attention is paid, then it is possible to understand it more thoroughly. The more of inclination is there, the less likelihood is there of forgetting it. Number four, the teacher should not employ the power of memory of the student in remembering unnecessary things. Number five, rot memory should be discarded as far as possible. The students should be encouraged to understand the subject properly and then remember it. Number six, sometimes it is possible for the students to remember a thing by reading it several times as and when required. The teacher should encourage the students to follow this method. Number seven, the teacher should try to correlate the subjects taught with the life of the students. Number eight, the students should be taught according to their interest and standard of the intelligence. Side by side, only that method of memorizing should be used 
which is useful for the students. Number nine, the teacher should, as far as possible, use the association of ideas. Due to this method, it is possible to establish the relationship of the new knowledge with the old one, and the students can remember it in a better manner. Number 10, the students should be encouraged to have the will to learn a thing. In order to learn a thing, it is necessary to have the will to learn it. Number 11, in the early classes, recitation method should be used. Due to this method, it is possible for the students to remember a thing thoroughly and retain it for a longer period of time. Dear viewers, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you. See you again in the next episode.